Hello everyone, today we will review Artillery's new 3D printer, the Sidewinder X4 Pro. I haven't used artillery printers for a long time. The last time I reviewed and liked the Sidewinder X2 model was in 2021. Back then, its stable performance and large printing area had pleased me. Then it seemed to me that the brand remained quite silent. The X3 model was released occasionally, but I never heard about it. Let's see how our reunion with the brand after years has gone. Let's start reviewing its features right away. At first glance, the Sidewinder X4 Pro may seem like a 3D printer using standard materials, but the aluminum profiles used are not like the old Sigma profiles. Quite thick and heavy aluminum profiles have been used. These vertical profiles are also connected to the main body with carbon fiber support rods, which helps reduce the impact of vibrations, especially during high printing. There is a colorful touchscreen. The interface is simple, so even first-time users will not have difficulty. Since the screen is connected to the printer with a spiral cable, it is possible to take the screen in your hand and control it even during short-term uses. The printer uses a PEI-coated flexible bed. On this bed, we can make printings with a width and depth of 24-24 cm and a maximum height of 26 cm. The bed moves on a wide linear rail. The linear rail is one of the systems I particularly like and prefer brands to use, especially in fast printers. We can call it semi-automatic bed leveling because you still need to do a manual leveling with paper beforehand just like in the old days like before. We level the four points using a piece of paper and continue this adjustment until the paper can slide in and out with slight friction between the nozzle and the bed. Then, the advanced pressure sensitive nozzle carefully touches 81 distinct points on the bed surface to meticulously detect any minor errors or imperfections in bed leveling and accurately determines the correct height for each individual point. The device, which has a direct drive dual gear all metal extruder, also ensures that the printing head moves on a linear rail just like the bed. The X4 Pro has a wireless connectivity feature. With this feature, you can connect your printer to the network, enter the IP address from your browser, send your G-code files, and start your printing remotely. At the same time, you can also change the printing speed, temperature, and fan settings in real time through this interface. With its silent motherboard, clipper operating system, and 1.5 GHz 4-core processor, the X4 Pro is a fast printer capable of reaching a speed of 500 mm per second with an acceleration of 12,000 mm per second squared. At first, the printer initially looked quite sturdy and very nice, but there were indeed a few points that definitely caught my attention. I will address all of these one by one. Now let's see what kind of printing quality the X4 Pro offers us. Let's continue the review with the prints I made using PLA. The Benchy Boat is essential for initial prints. I always print the classic test version, but there are many versions of the Benchy. Also, the original version is better for the actual test. Here I printed both the original Benchy and the Ghost Ship Benchy. Both models turned out very well. Actually, there was just a bit of stringing and minor sagging at steep angles on the Ghost Ship. It's not a model I've printed before. 
Therefore, I can't compare this with my previous printings, but I can say that there were no printing errors that bothered me. Everything looks good with the standard Benchy model. There is no stringing or surface printing problem. A very successful test printing indeed. I made the printing of the second test model with PLA produced for high speed printing. I used it for the first time and I must say it's not bad. The name of this color is also very nice, Kiss Red. I also like the pun in its name. The colors are indeed very bright. Its name is Dance of Dragons. If you want, you can download the model from STL Flix. I think this color suits the model very well. I can say that the printing is almost flawless. There is very little stringing and some sagging at sharp angles. Other than that, everything looks good. All the details are fine. And before the speed tests, this vase model is my latest printing with PLA. I wanted to use wood-filled PLA in this model. It's a type of filament that suits such objects. It's a simple model. I just wanted to see the maximum possible height of the printer here in a concrete way. It has indeed been a very nice printing. There are absolutely no defects or problems on the model. We will continue the review with PETG printings. PETG is not a difficult material to work with for open frame printers. Using materials with a high shrinkage rate, such as ABS and ASA, is not always easy. These materials are affected by airflow, their corners may lift or completely separate from the bed. In fact, to prevent this, we usually apply adhesives to the bed. In open frame printers, even if ABS adheres properly to the bed, sometimes the layers do not fuse as well as in enclosed printers, even if you do not notice it. This can affect the strength or cause cracks between layers. However, Printing is certainly not impossible. I always conduct ABS printing tests in open frame printer reviews. This time I printed a moderately large piece. This is a shower shelf that can be used in the bathroom. The designer seems to have made it in the shape of an oyster mushroom. Oyster mushrooms really do look like a shelf. The printing is generally nice. I had applied adhesive to the bad before printing. It worked. However, there was cracking at a point between the layers, this is normal. So the issue has nothing to do with the printer. It is entirely related to the material and the printing environment. Use open frame printers for ABS printing. Better to work on slightly smaller models or print models with circular lines. For example, the parts of this shelf were also printed in this way. As you can see, despite having sharp corners, there has been absolutely no warping at the edges or any cracking between the individual layers. We will continue another bathroom products using the PET G. This is a soap dish. It had two parts. It was an important 3D model that could give us an idea about bed leveling. I'll talk about it in a moment. Both the first layer and the last layer of the model formed very well. Although there were right angle bends at the beginning, I did not encounter any warping. A very nice printing definitely came out. There is slight roughness on the upper part of the piece placed inside the soap dish, but I think these are at an acceptable level. I liked the performance of PETG and wanted to see the printer in a longer printing, so I did another printing. As you know, one of the most commonly printed filament types in 3D printers is PETG. I really like this printing as well. There are slight ripples at the points that angle inward, but not too many. Overall, I can confidently say that the printing quality on this model is good. Since the Sidewinder X4 Pro has a dual gear direct drive extruder, you can also use flexible filaments such as TPU with this printer. I made two sample printings with TPU for example. I'm happy printing's quality. TPU is a difficult material, but I had no trouble here. Feeding can become insufficient when speeding up. This is due to the characteristics of the material. While pulling the filament from above, it slightly stretches and extends, and the material may not flow as it should. If you experience something like this, slowing down your printing might help. I completed my printings with TPU at a speed of 50 mm per second, which can be considered standard. And we have come to the speed tests. As always, I printed the same 3D models at 50, 150, 250, and 500 mm per second, and during these printings, I proportionally increased the acceleration along with the speed. Now let's carefully place all these two-piece models side by side and closely examine their differences. Let's start with the lower base of the bust. There is no problem at a speed of 50 mm per second. It's a very good printing. However, surface undulation started immediately at 150 mm per second. At 250, these fluctuations did not increase. I think a better surface was formed compared to 150 mm per second. When the speed reaches 500 mm per second, the undulation is much more obvious. 
You can even feel this problem on the surface when you touch it with your hand. I also got interesting results on the body part. Interestingly, while there was no vibration effect at 50 mm per second on the base part, the most I observed here was small undulations at 50 mm per second. I think the other speeds are very successful in this part, but this is not the same at every point. For example, when I look at the shoulder part, the results are close to each other. We can say that as the speed increases, the effects of very slight vibration increase. A similar situation is present on the flat part just below the shoulder. No speed is bad. It can even be said that the quality is almost the same up to a speed of 500 mm per second. When we move up a bit and look at the protective helmet, we can see the effects of vibration more clearly. At 50 mm per second, it is flawless. There is no vibration effect. 150 mm per second is not bad. At speeds of 250 and 500 mm per second, the vibration effects are more compared to the others. This is at a much more noticeable level. I definitely noticed the same thing at the top point of the helmet. In fact, indeed, when it came to speeds of 250 and 500 mm per second, even small gaps started to form. Honestly, there isn't much difference when you look at the face. There is an undulation, a vibration on the glasses lens in all the printings. I think the other parts look quite good. When paying attention, I can notice that the effects of vibration increase slightly with speed. Let me also provide some information about the speed tests. Even though I set the maximum speeds in the slicing software, the printers cannot reach these speeds at every point. Therefore, the difference in printing times does not change at the same rate as the speed. This is the reason why the difference between 250 and 500 mm per second is small. For example, since the X4 Pro actually has a display that shows the real-time speed, I was able to observe this. In the 0.16 minimum layer quality 500 mm per second speed test, the printer actually reached a speed of 300 mm per second. Occasionally, it reached a maximum speed of 340 mm per second, while in its idle movements, it could reach a speed of 500 mm per second. There are many more parameters for speed, but basically the situation is the same for all 3D printers. 3D printers generally reach maximum speeds in surface modes consisting of a single wall at 0.1 mm layer quality. I think in order to combine speed and quality well, a slower printing is definitely needed to achieve a slightly better result on the outer walls. Higher speeds can typically be used when creating the inner walls or infill of the model. I can say that the Sidewinder X4 Pro is generally a quiet printer. In my tests, I obtained around 53 dB at a speed of 50 mm per second with the fans on, while the noise level increased to 55 dB when the speed reached 300 mm per second. Since we turn off the fans for materials like ABS, I also conducted the same test with the fans off. This time at 50 m s, the noise level dropped below 50 dB, while at 300 m s, it remained in the 50-51 dB range. The noise level is good, it is not a very noisy printer. The frame is quite sturdy. Linear rails have been used both on the bed and the printing head. I had mentioned that this was an important factor for me, but I also want to ask why you didn't integrate the vibration sensor into this printer, because the printer uses clipper software. This printer supports vibration measurement. If you attach a vibration sensor to it, the printer measures the vibration effects at its location and helps reduce the effects caused by vibrations, such as during the process of printing. I think if they had installed this part, indeed much better results could have been achieved, especially in the speed tests. However, at what we can call average speeds of 80-90 mm per second, I did not encounter a problem related to vibration. There is also an aspect of bed leveling that I do not fully understand. Why are we doing manual leveling when the nozzle can perform pressure sensitive and precise measurements this way? Sure, these systems existed in the past, but the paper leveling process is now over. It's not a difficult task, of course, you can complete the leveling in a short time. But I think it would have been much better if they had made the bed fixed and the system fully automatic. In my opinion, the X4 Pro is an entry level economical 3D printer. If you are also looking for an economical printer for hobby purposes or want to buy a 3D printer to learn about the technology but do not want to allocate a high budget for it, you can consider this option. Or if you are an experienced 3D printer user and things like bed leveling are not a problem for you, if you say, I will get a sensor for vibration and handle it, of course this is also possible. That's all I have to say about the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Pro. Hope this video was useful. If you also want to get one, I added the product link in the description.
What do you think about this video and the printer? I look forward to your comments. May your printer be trouble-free and your printings be flawless. See you in the next video. Goodbye.